It's Thursday, August 29th, 2024, and we've got some weather to talk about. Starting off looking at the satellite here, you can see our big swirling system that we've been talking about up there in Canada, pushing some cooler air down into the United States. We're, a lot of us are going to feel that over the next little bit, including millions of people today in the form of severe weather. Okay, so in the transition period between the steamy hot temperatures and the cooler temperatures, things are going to fire up a little bit. But speaking of firing up, there's a lot of interest right now in the tropics. Check this out. The National Hurricane Center has elevated the probability of this little disturbance becoming a full-on tropical system within the next seven days. We're up to a 40 to 60 percent chance. There's a pretty good chance at this point, I think, that this is going to become tropical depression or tropical storm Francine. And the southern trajectory of the potential path is quite concerning because this is going to put it right into the Caribbean, where of course we've got to be concerned about our friends in the Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Cuba, that whole area. But this also puts it in a prime zone to eventually go up into the Gulf of Mexico, maybe towards Florida or something like that. So my attention is really starting to shift towards this. And of course, we're going to get super in-depth into that right here in a minute. But first, there is a severe weather threat today, like we were talking about. 5% tornado probability in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Wind and hail are going to be the main threats. Uh, also, in Iowa there. A secondary marginal risk is in effect today for uh, portions of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina. Some wind, some small hail is possible over there. Biggest threat obviously around the Minneapolis area. You guys should definitely be watching out for the hail, the wind, and the not crazy, but higher than usual tornado threat for this time of year. This is the same system that just yesterday dropped a very significant tornado in South Dakota. So keep that in mind. Be weather aware today. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Tomorrow, the severe weather threat is not quite as significant, but it does encompass quite a few people from Michigan all the way back towards Missouri, St. Louis, that area. We are going to have the same kind of line of storms moving into the Ohio Valley and bringing some wind and hail to these places as well. And then that actually continues on the day three outlook where we have a marginal risk for about 50 million people in the mid-Atlantic and northeast regions. So be weather aware if you're in any of these risks zones. I'm not looking for a huge outbreak of any sorts. Here's what the radar could look like around 3 p.m. Eastern today. Of course, we are watching our cold front with the cool air from Canada behind it causing storms, but also pay attention to all of the heavy rain that's going to be happening along the coast of Texas down there into southern portions of Louisiana, even back over towards Florida. There's a lot of tropical energy that's just going to be kind of dumping itself over the southeast here. A couple of places definitely could use the rain, but there's also going to be a few places that get overwhelmed. And of course, we're we're going to have the probability of seeing some flash flooding as a result of that. Also pay attention to these pop-up storms over here in the east. Some of those could carry some big hail with them, some strong winds, but of course the number one area of interest is going to be this very strong line of storms that's going to be racing through Wisconsin, Minnesota, northern portions of Iowa today. The farther back to the south and west we go along this line, the less intense those storms are going to become, but still they pose a threat for some small hail and some gusty winds. Moving forward, the storms are going to die out overnight tonight. Here we are at 5 a.m. Friday morning. Things are looking quite quiet for the most part, except for down there around Houston. The storms and the rain, are it's going to be really strong, especially as we get into Friday morning and afternoon in Louisiana. Some flash flooding is going to be possible as a result of the very heavy rainfall rates down there. Some stronger storms are going to try to spark up once again as we get into the afternoon and evening hours in the Ohio Valley and the Midwest, up into the Great Lakes regions. That's associated with the risk that we saw on the day two out look there. And of course, the pattern's just going to continue until this cold front gets through everyone. And if you're behind it, it's going to be quite dry. It's going to be cooler and drier, not a lot of rain at all. But in the interim, there's going to be a decent shot that everybody sees some rain as the cold front exits the East Coast. Okay, so if you've been needing some rain, I know a lot of you have, this is your shot here before we get into next week and everybody's pretty dry. Even farther into the future, this kind of shows that a little bit better. Notice how the cold front kind of clears everybody out, but it really stalls out uh, in a way that might keep the moisture and the rain around for quite some time in Texas, over towards the mid-Mississippi River Valley, into Dixie Alley, over towards the southeastern portions of the United States. You guys could actually see a prolonged period of isolated to scattered gully washers as a result of all of this Gulf of Mexico energy trying to, you know, go up farther north, but it can't because there's that cool boundary in place, so a lot of that convection is going to happen 
right on top of you down here. But we are going to be very dry and very much cooler than average north of that cold front. Things are getting warmer in the west as well as a little bit of a ridge tries to form. Another storm system does try to come in as we go into next week. We talked about this yesterday. It's looking a little bit less robust on today's model runs, but you can see here another big trough with lots of cool air behind it trying to bring some storms in as we get into the September 6th and 7th time frame. But you can't see it right now, but there's a problem lurking to the south. Let me scroll down here. Let me show you this. Look at this. That is where our focus is going to go next. So what we're looking at here are the potential tracks of tropical systems or, you know, cyclonic systems that pop up on our GEFS ensemble models. There's a lot of different lines here. We call these spaghetti plots. And this is just showing us kind of what the models are, are seeing right now. Basically, we've got a couple of areas of interest, right? And what happens with those areas of interest is there's a bunch of different possible outcomes here. You can see that the one that the National Hurricane Center is watching specifically really fans out around the Caribbean. There's a couple of different members that take it towards Mexico. There's a couple of members that take it over Cuba. A couple of members even curve out to sea here. But the thing is, is this is a vast difference from what we were seeing just not too long ago where there wasn't anything at all popping up down here. And anything that was popping up was kind of immediately going off to the north. So now we're seeing a trend where a lot of the guidance is pointing towards a system that is going to try to stay farther south. South and the farther south that the system stays, the more likely it is it's going to be a problem for people. And of course, another interesting thing is the system right behind it. So this might be the beginning of this, you know, active season that we've been promoting all year. The GFS has a really interesting and quite robust handling of this storm. Watch the wave here. It's come off of Africa. Now it's getting close to the islands and you can really start to see it get its act together once it gets south of Puerto Rico. And this is when it enters the portion of the ocean that really has the capability of turning a tropical depression into a hurricane. There's a lot of ocean heat content down here. Sea surface temperatures are off the charts. Everything is just really favorable for hurricanes down here. That's why earlier in the season we had Hurricane Barrel explode into a Category 5 seemingly overnight. I'm not saying that that's exactly what's going to happen with Francine here, but it's entering an environment that could potentially promote that kind of activity. So we've got to at least address it, right? But yeah, the GFS shows a pretty healthy storm by September 6th it goes across Cuba and then of course the GFS uh, the latest GFS anyways takes this up towards uh, the western side of Florida on September 10th but we can't put any stock in that this is one model run this will change significantly even just by the time you're watching this video the GFS is showing a different scenario okay uh, it is important to note that we are now seeing real activity directed at uh, people here in the United States and in the Caribbean so we've got to start paying extra attention to this. And it's not just the Atlantic Ocean that's popping off with activity. We've got a bunch of different storms in the Pacific as well. There's a dance of tropical storms and depressions happening around Hawaii right now, which is quite unusual. We've got Gilma and Hector actually on their way towards Hawaii. The good news is both of those are going to weaken significantly before they get there. However, tropical storm Gilma is going to pose a threat to Hawaii, mostly in terms of rain. It's going to be kind of slow moving. It's going to take all day Friday and Saturday day before it gets out of our hair. So there's some places that might see, especially near some mountains, there's some places that might see more than 10 inches of rain in a very short period of time. This will, of course, lead to flash flooding, landslides, mudslides, that kind of thing. So we want you guys to be prepared for that. If we've got anybody watching in Hawaii or if you have interests in Hawaii, this weekend is going to be pretty rough in terms of weather in Hawaii, but it's not going to be a hurricane or a tropical storm by the time it gets there. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, they've probably already downgraded it from tropical storm Gilma to tropical depression Gilma. It's unlikely that we'll do a live stream today, but we are here just in case. 50% probability of a live stream today, 20% tomorrow. The severe weather threats just don't look very concerning to me. Don't get me wrong. There's going to be some hail. There might be a tornado or two, but as far as like what we can provide during a live stream, I just don't think it's too much today, but we're here and we're watching it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on just in case stuff does hit the fan and we decide to go live. You'll get that notification immediately. Okay. And then, uh, next week, we're definitely going to have a video on Monday, and we'll probably even have an, uh, another video before that, giving you some updates on this upcoming tropical system, if there are developments to communicate. So just subscribe, and uh, we'll be with you uh, every step of the way, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.